Welcome Wanderer, my name is Chris aka The Philosopher's Games and today we continue with the Gollum Let's Play. This is episode number two and last episode Gollum got captured in Mordor and was brought to Sauron's Dark Tower which the men of Gondor and the elves call Barad-dûr. And there he was imprisoned as slave and has to do slave labor in the form of some tedious tasks that we had to do. He survived his first day and when he woke up on day two, we stopped the last episode and this is where we will continue. Before we start, a few hints. This is a law focused let's play and I will compare what we see in the game with what Tolkien actually wrote. Further, I try to pronounce names as Tolkien described it and of course shout outs to the artists who allowed me to use their fantastic artworks that I at times will show you to explain something. But enough talking, let us start. Day two, another day full of tedious slave labor, which I'm not looking forward to. We awaken our cell and of course we are brought somewhere. Also not treated well. The walking animation here looks very strange though. Like it looks much better in game. I always wonder why that is. It's very noticeable. Maybe it's a case of it depends on the perspective that um, the walking animation is designed to look good from you know, the cameras behind Gollum. But not from at the side or the different animation. I don't know. This is a very interesting question, by the way. How did Sauron's servants and allies call him? Uh, Sauron is a name that um, the enemies of Sauron gave him. So Sauron himself does not call him Sauron. And often in the book, he, for example, like orcs, I, I assume, avoid calling the name at all. So here they call him the Great Eye. That also appears in the book, but maybe only three or four times, so it's very rare. And uh, often we hear them using the phrase, um, Lugburt wants us to do something. And Lugburt is a name of Baradur of the Dark Tower. So it's basically like saying, yeah, the headquarters wants us to do something. And in some cases they really mean the headquarter. In some cases they also referring to Sauron with this without actually saying his name. Considering that they are here, that we are here in Lugburt, in Baradur, it makes of course sense that they don't use this kind of phrasing, so they have to come up with something else. So I think Great Eye is decent. Makes sense. What the idea of this um, woman here, of this potential witch here is, I have no idea. We've talked to her in the past. I guess it shows us that being here in slave or prisoner in Baradur is a terrible experience. We see some bones in the other cage, so not looking great for the witch. And yeah, that, that is one um, way to refer to Sauron, the Great Eye. I think that makes kind of sense. It feels a bit Peter Jacksony because he portrayed, he really had to portray Sauron somehow and he decided to go with the great burning eye all the time. Special honor for you today. Some of our little crackers didn't go off last night. Some dirt eater needs to crawl down the tunnels and light them up. That sounds like a cool task. All dirt eaters, don't you two look like kings? <laughs> I like Stop his humor though. But yeah, it's um, it's interesting that they um, thought about this and didn't call him Sauron. There is a scene where the mouse of Sauron um, meets like Gandalf and Aragorn and so on, and um, they have a so short conversation. And there he calls him Sauron the Great. But you have to keep in mind this could be a case of unreliable narrator. Now this is also interesting detail. They talk about dwarfs. We come talk about this in a moment. But yeah, it, the, the, the historical record of this meeting between the mouth of Sauron and um, Aragorn and so on is of course written by the victors. As a result, they call him Sauron there. It is, you could speculate that they might not, that the mouth of Sauron has introduced him in a different way, like, like Tar Myron or something like this. Though after the fall of Numinor, he stopped using this name. And this is also reflected like in this place that they call him the Great Eye. There was a 
There's also an interesting um, phrase. Um, some orcs talk later uh, in Lord of the Rings, and they talk about the big bosses and also the biggest one, which is Sauron. So he's the biggest boss. So like a way to refer to him. Of course, there's like a hierarchy, like a structure of command. We know about the mouth of Sauron. The Witch King and the Nazgul for sure also have something to, to say and like a higher rank. Quite interesting. About the dwarves we talk in a moment. Also, yeah, Aragorn into towers mentioned this in a dialogue that the allies of um, like Sauron did not allow his servants or allies to call him Sauron. That was kind of forbidden for those. So, of course, it makes complete sense, at least if we consider Aragorn, a reliable source for that, that um, makes complete sense that they use a different name. So very plausible, cool detail. Um, yeah, this task is not that interesting. I think we found like a bat wing and a spoon or so. Unfortunately, collectibles in this game are not that interesting, I have to admit. I would have wished that there would be maybe some information, some more information about those. I know. Our task is here now to put these red stones in this barrel and then it kind of explodes or something. Maybe it's like dynamite increasing the... Uh, the size of the tunnels for further mining. I have no idea why we do this task. It seems to make very little sense, I have to admit. Here, yeah, by the way, I had a weird bug. I couldn't jump, I could climb, but I couldn't jump while climbing. As a result, I couldn't get up here. And that f I tried res loading the checkpoint multiple times, it didn't work. So this is like a recording here where it worked. And I had to restart the whole level for that. So I had to play it. It was not that long. To be honest, like restarting the whole level, there's still some checkpoint parts that you can use. But it was a bit annoying. The game is unfortunately buggy here and there at times, and it wasn't patched since release. So it's very unfortunate. So you can see in the dark, hmm? Of course, here we have our Gollum vision. And Gollum, yes, can see in the dark quite well, I would assume. The One Ring enhanced his perception. We also see this with Frodo. Orcs also can see in the dark quite well. Here we have a, like a decision what answer we can give him. We gave him the Smeagol answer. He wants to... And Smeagol, yeah, wants of course as river folk like the Stuars lived at the river. He wants to go back there where he once was, his home. Of course, the Gollum um, sees this might maybe a bit different. At this point already, I think Gollum is uh, far more dominant in a way, especially when he's here alone. I think there's far less Smeagol left, but I still find the idea interesting that we have the option to choose and do, do this a little bit. It's just part of the game. Unfortunately, it's often doesn't feel in this game often not too impactful and interesting, but yeah, we will see. So let's crawl through this tunnel and complete this very tedious task that we have to repeat far too many times. Like, I mean, I get that they want to show us how terrible this place is and how terrible this slave labor here is. But they um, let us do this like three times. You can breathe now. Breathe in. I think at least. One more. Yeah, one more. There it is. What's the secret? I had to replay the section, so that's why I know. Um, Has it food, eh? <laughs> Gollum laughs as fish. But yeah, now we have to do this another time. And it wasn't interesting the first two times. And this is like why the game also has some very low scores. Because it's just simply too long. If this would be just the first two, like this the second chapter here, to show how terrible it is and then cut and then we come to the interesting stuff, it would be okay in my opinion. To have some tedious tasks and just to you know, breathe the atmosphere, if that makes sense, to get a feeling for this place as, an, as a little exposition bit. But it's it's not getting much better. It's, all you do is like 
you have to do quite a few more tedious tasks early on here. That's my opinion, not a good design decision, I think. And yeah, here's the next hole already open. Our friend, as Gollum noted, is too old and frail. He can't do the tasks, so we have to do it for him. He's just standing there. He has a little bubble that if it hits us, images us, and if we are in the air, we fall, I assume, into our death and had to start at the checkpoints, which are usually set very generously in this game, though. But yeah, now another barrel, and we put it in. If you're not fast enough getting back from here, and the barrel explodes, you also instantly die. I like that there are some fumes coming up when it explodes, so if you stay here, you also get slowly damaged over time to get out fast. Puts in some urgency, but yeah, beyond that, it's not that interesting design-wise. You could make the argument, did they have actually explosives, but I think... Yeah, maybe. Rom speculates about what happens when he gets a one ring. It's kind of angry and I can understand him here. <laughs> like his humor, I have to admit. <laughs> and now he wants bread for crawling through some dirt. Take it then. Nobody shall call Kuznach unjust. Back upstairs with you. Well, Kuznach is, or Kuznach is um, at least st um, keeping his word. Now we talk about uh, yeah, the other secrets. You mentioned the dwarves here again, we wanted to talk about this. Are there dwarves in Mordor? That's an interesting question. Let's listen to the cutscene. But after a while, he knew where the guards watched. He'd steal red stones and hide them in a cave near the bridge. Just one stone each day, so the guards wouldn't notice. Why? Why do you think? What happened? Well, one day he slipped and fell. <laughs> That's not a nice story. Indeed. I suppose not. But yeah, the dwarves. So in the Silmarillion, when we read about the Battle of the Last Alliance there in the last chapter of the Rings of Power and the Third Age, Um, there is the mention, okay, there's no new dialogue here with the witch. There is a mention that that day when the last alliance fought against Sauron. Uh, oh, we have another dialogue here. Little Gollum got bread. Now Gollum owes it to me. Of course, he wants our bread. <laughs> Your bread? Or are you deaf? Are you deaf, little Gollum? Perhaps Oak would sleep more quiet if we was his friend. <laughs> like this written answer. Is that a threat? Are you threatening me? Ouch. <laughs> but yeah, I hope the cutscene is over and I can talk again. Don't want to talk too much about the cutscene. Great Eye sees us. There it is again. It makes sense, it's plausible, as said. So, yeah, that uh, it is described in this chapter about the Battle of the Last Alliance that that day, basically, all people and also beasts and birds in Middle-earth were, were kind of divided into two factions, one on the side of Sauron, the other on the side of the Last Alliance. The dwarves of all the dwarves um, of the House of Durin, so from Moria, or complicated dwarf story, so Gimli's uh, and Thorin's uh, ancestors, 
Uh, those dwarves also only fought on the side of the last alliance, but it is described that also some dwarves fought on the side of Sauron at this time. So there are definitely dwarves that kind of have allied with Sauron. Not all of them, but some of them. Who exactly is hard to tell. Also in The Hobbit there's a mention of so-called wicked dwarves, as they are described, and yeah, they're also kind of working together with orcs, it's described, so I'm also on the side of um, the Dark Lord. In the very early writings of Tolkien in the Book of Lost Tales, I think there's also the mention that some dwarves for, um, you could say, yeah, yeah, money or payment, would also work on the side of Morgos and forge something for him, even though they were not really allies to him, but would say, yeah, whoever pays us, we will do work for him. So this, you could can definitely make an argument that dwarves helping Sauron build something is at least distantly plausible. There are definitely references for this in at least The Hobbit, that, or at least references for dwarves allying with Sauron or working for him and working together with orcs. And because dwarves are good at building, I guess coming to the conclusion that they build something or forge something for Sauron makes sense in my opinion. When you leave the ditch, you will see the Rattler. The hoist with all the bones, remember? The Rattler will take you up to the halls of Grond. If you ever now, here he alive, explains the um, path here, and he also explained that it seems like the people who get to the light or so are turned into, maybe potentially killed, and then turned into this liquid that is fed to the beast. So, yeah. Interesting uh, system here. Let's not think too much about it. This particular, um, yeah, thing there, I didn't know where to go there initially when I played this the first time and wanted, hey, what, what, is, what am I supposed to do? And you have just to let go and fall down. If you know it, it's easy, but it, when you first are there, it's kind of, it was stuck there for a moment. So far away. And here's something so strange in this game. It often shows you where you need to go. There is the hole, there we have to get, here's all the way. Here we see these beasts, and now, yeah, there are beasts, and you have to do this. It feels like they're not very confident in their level design. This is not the only time they do this. We have seen this in the last episode already, and we will see it several times here in this episode again and throughout the whole game. And if they would be very confident in their um, level design, it would be different. Here we see, like, a weird ledge. It looks almost like you could cling to it, but you can't. As it turns out, I just tested it, and... Yeah, we have to just run and walk over this. It's not that interesting. And that's the problem with this game. The gameplay is simply not that interesting. If this would be just a very short section of the game, okay. But keep in mind, the first six chapters of this game are playing in Mordor. Now I have to climb up here and get to this um, hole, pi pipe hole thing that we have seen. And here it is. And if we look down, yeah, the beasts say, yeah, we, we are fine now. And here we get just teleported to the next place. It's kind of interesting. It's not like an edit or so. It's literally you go into this pipe, interact with it, and you teleport. And we have to climb up. What he says, yes, but he says, save the precious, and who has the precious egg? He talks about what that the Dark Lord said to him about the precious. Not here, is it? The I assume. How can we protect the precious when it's so far away? Still thinking over about this ring. But of course, he knows that Bilbo has it, not here. And also, cl climbing or through these holes is so weird like it feels so wrong when you control it it's really not well done in my opinion you have no orientation where your character is you just hold forward and then sometimes it automatically goes to the side it just feels weird yeah here again it shows us in all the detail and i will forget this route in a moment 
but um, and walk into some um, dead ends. But it shows us in all the detail where we actually have to go to complete this task. Like it, it's like they are not completely not confident in their level design that the player will figure it out and it will be a fun experience. You always have to say, yeah, this is the, now the new level section and from here you start, from there you have to go. It, it's it's really weird. It feels outdated. I, I've not seen many plays do this. This is like a thing I've seen the last time, I don't know, 2006 or something. <laughs> it's just ages ago. Here we can't really jump up there. Invisible wall. I don't know why. At least we could cling on to there. Here I didn't hold on to the wall again. I don't know why. So we lose a bunch of health here. And yeah, here we learn that if you're in the shadows, here we have a stealth section, our first one. We don't want to be seen. Do you see if you, so if you walk through some shadows, but not all of them, Gollum turns like, it becomes like black and has white eyes and it shows that, okay, here Gollum is perfectly hidden and basically invisible in this state. I feel it's a bit artificial, for example, yeah. So some other shadows that also are kind of dark don't have this interaction. Some shadows that are defined to do this have this. This is my opinion, feels a bit inconsistent here. Okay, here we just sneak through it. And I'm not, I'm not the most patient person. I think the stealth is also boring. It's a lot of waiting. You don't have cool abilities. Of course, it's Gollum. Why should he have cool stealth abilities? But you know what I mean? To make stealth interesting, you need some kind of good level design. And you need a good flow for it, in my opinion. And maybe some interesting abilities. You can throw stones to distract enemies, that's something. But in my opinion, it's usually um, not that interesting. Here we can just can make turn off the light. Then it creates a shadow where we'd be invisible, but we just walk past him and yeah. It makes very little sense to just uh, wait these cycle. Like waiting, waiting is always boring, kind of. Especially, yeah, you, you can't see me there anyway. No matter what happens, there's no urgency there. I could just stay indefinitely in the shadow, and nothing would happen as long as I don't jump around or something or make noises. So I decide to just run through it and don't do this stealth thing. We just eat an arrow and say, yeah, whatever. We just eat a fish. I don't care. And the next section starts. Here it can happen that you don't get the save point here. So there's a checkpoint where Gollum is standing currently. And shows us again where we have to go. No trust in the level design. <laughs> we just eat a fish here, so we have full HP and move on a little bit. And here we see like the item behind the thing here. It's a stone. And here that's an interesting section. Like you have multiple ways of doing it. Here for example you see another lantern. We could throw it out with a stone. But I decide to just go and climb over the heads and do it this way. When Gollum loses like um, a set has no... his feet are not touching a wall while climbing. He loses stamina while climbing. That is kind of cool because it creates a bit of urgency. It's a little neat trick that makes climbing more interesting, but in certain places. Here you see that jumping, though, doesn't consume any stamina when you have still a wall. Uh, if yeah, your feet's touching a wall. So you can just jump to the half of this um, climbing section and then slowly climb the other. Here I wanted to, oh no, cling to the wall there. It didn't work. I was too hasty here. R trying to try, try to get... was too greedy. But yeah, he didn't cling to the wall, so I just fell to my death. And we have to replay the section again, which is of course not that great. I just collect the stones here again. You could need them later. I think you don't even need to climb much. I think you could just run here to the path. So this section is interesting because you have multiple options to get to the exit. To climb up. I don't know what the frame rate is doing here. It's just dies. But here I do the trick with the jumping to the middle of it again so we don't lose that much stamina. It's also faster this way. But yeah. And 
again. And this time... Oops, uh, this time we uh, yeah, just try to be a little bit more careful. I think we could have just walked... No, that's a, the, I think the, the reason why I decided against walking there was the orc there standing. See, here we are not black in this dark shadow there. That means we are not invisible. If somebody would look into the shadow, he would totally see us. At least there's an indicator for it. I don't know what's going on here. Some, something with the controls not working right. Finally. Yeah, controls are sometimes a bit clunky. Or might also my own stupidity. Don't want to blame the game here. Press the wrong button, of course. Climb up, get instantly caught. Instant game over, but fortunately there is a save point direct, uh, directly here, so we don't have to walk all the way again here. Ah, press the wrong button again. Fell down. So I always press circle here. Or B as the um, prompt here shows. Do our jump trick again. They didn't hear us or notice this. To wait till the lantern faces away from us. And the trick here is just to go here very slowly. We have the time. This orc there in the corner seems to not notice us. And then we get into the Rattler. This elevator and the next section loads. And we get to the halls of Grond. Grond named after the, I assume, Hammer of Morgos, the Maze of Morgos. Hammer of the Underworld. It's Talking give this translation. They built giant monsters for the war. For this, so I think it just means mace or hammer translated. House made of steel. And here's I mean that is how do we get there? An interesting um, detail again coming to who names what which object how. No way to cross. Needs to take the long way round. Yeah, Grond looks actually good, I have to agree on this. Yeah, Grond, just looked it up, is uh, Sindarin. And describes a very heavy object, or hammer. And their most famously object called that was the Hammer of Morgos. But he might have called it himself differently again, because why should he name it in Sindarin? But it's a very nitpicky detail, I have to admit. But maybe the, the, he called it like that and liked the name, I don't know. So here, it uh, you wonder, wh why do you have to go? But you see there's an indicator down there, which is very helpful. And the game just wants us to drop from here, which I find highly unrealistic, to be honest. If you would drop down there into any form of water, you would potentially break your bones or die so Potentially having some problems. Yeah, now we're in the Hall of Grond and have to climb and find certain informations. Yeah, here again, I mean this... <laughs> doing this with your bare hands is also not realistic, so let's not talk about realism here, but... We have a bit of platforming plus stealth, but the stealth is not that, if I don't screw up, it's not that uh, big of a deal here in this section. Often finding the way, kind of. Oh, nice, a bit of food. Probably a worm or so. Gorm is not, pi is not a picky eater, <laughs> except for <laughs> the good stuff, I guess. 
normal food he doesn't like. So let's continue. Um, it is... Background looks not bad, like all the... It looks hot. Lava stuff. I think that's kind of fitting. Because, of course, Sauron needs to forge stuff. We need heat and energy. So utilizing some... Lava flows down here. Makes kind of sense to me. It's like a mansion you can read in multiple ways that potentially they also used a bit of magma lava um, from the uh, from 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 the um, Mount Doom. Almost said from the Misty Mountains, but no, from Mount Doom. Now this all can look really good. Like almost saw me there around the corner. God, we have to go here. This ladder here looks climbable. We couldn't cling on to that. And yeah, here we have to climb up again. Now it's a lot of climbing in this level, I think. I can already spoil the climbing section here. It's not that interesting and great. There's some weird stuff here. I will edit out some deaths for sure. Not to show you that I'm that good, can do this deathless, more like to just get through the section fast. There's not much I can talk here either. So it takes a moment to f for me to figure out that I'm supposed to climb there to the wall. And you see, where do we go next? And here you see it pops up, backwards jump. The game wants us to do a blind backwards jump. There's a dedicated button for that. That is definitely a feature I like. I think it's a good idea to put in, put it on extra feature. I had some games where it always felt clunky doing these backward jumps. Here you just press a button. It's easy. That's one of the few things I would say that is kind of a good idea in the, in the context of climbing um, and platforming in this game. Yeah, you just learn. Okay, sometimes you have to just jump, jump to the other side. Use a few times. And another crow. Maybe watching us. Maybe a spy of Sauron. We know that Sauron and... as also Saruman and so on had spies. These poles here. I don't know why games put them in so, so much. But they always feel clunky and weird. Usually if you jump to them and instantly jump again, you don't lose momentum with these poles. And yeah, here it looked like I could jump directly to the pole and cling to it, but nope. That's not what the game wants us to do. The solution's much easier. You don't jump up there, you just jump to the other side. I think now I want to try if I can actually skip that and jump directly to this, but no, so close. <laughs> At least the checkpoint's right there, so it's not big of a loss. Often in the game, to be fair, the checkpoints are set well, so we don't have to redo much stuff, but there are some sections that are really frustrating where you ask yourself, why is there no checkpoint? Might have to do with you being in combat. It's easy. You have so little control over your jumps in this game. I have trouble jumping on this weird thing there. It would be different, like the jump controls are not great. So yeah, you just jump to these ledges there and then do the back jump. Which has not worked here for whatever reason. And we again fall to our death. Oh boy. So this, maybe I'll leave it unedited in the game just to show you that how, how clunky sometimes the climbing and controls feel. Move the camera, it works it better. Now we don't see the other ledge again. The swinging also fits so weird. I have no idea how weird it feels. So, where does the game want us to go? Is 
It looks like we can't make this jump, to be fair. But here we can make the jump, and here we have to the prompt again, and this is how you get up there. Found it. That was not well played, to be fair, by my side. I'm sure if we could have also jumped to to this ledge here and jumped over there. I asked myself, why is this here? The game wants us to go here. And here I have now these rotating poles. Especially if your if your control feeling for the controls is not there yet, then it's not that great. And you see, yeah, just just getting to swing here. If you don't have the momentum, like if you can't jump instantly, you have to keep swinging. And it feels also so clunky, so weird. You have it's hard to describe. Like in some of other games, you swing like one or two times, and then it's have it in this game you need like the extra bit of swinging and feels as well very clunky and you try to just get this weird unrealistic jump distance so here i decide to just brute force through it my happiness was not great in this section And here we can jump up. Who paints all the stuff here? I always ask myself the question. Who's going to this level and paints? Yeah, you could go, go totally go up here. I don't. I don't think you just fan that the stuff you can interact with is always has to be marked. Sometimes it would also be great if um, that would not be the case, and you could just uh, you know cling to everything that you see to every ledge. I prefer this approach to be fair. And another swinging thing. Awesome. Like these these things that with the red ropes here that you can climb up. That looks somewhat natural. It's highlighted that you know, okay, I can interact with it, but it's not like somebody painted this for no apparent reason. I like this more. Here we have to do wall jumping. It is always uh, the wall running, I mean. And you do this by just running towards it. And then it does it automatically. The rest. You can jump at the end, but it also sometimes brings into trouble. It feels very clunky. In other games you have to jump against this, and then the wall running starts. That's not the case here. Oh, he has grabbed the charming. Earth. Of course. That goes on me. now the real challenge kind of made it but yeah as you see a lot of climbing is going on it's not that interesting I mean, it's kind of atmospheric and has some detail but the platforming in of itself is simply not that great And another swinging part. We missed the first thing, but luckily enough we cling to the other and couldn't make this jump. This section yeah, I really disliked. I <laughs> like this. Like I said, these poles feels so weird you kind of snapped to any time as we've seen here almost fell over this here but there was like invisible wall blocking me which is a good design decision to be fair but just would feel if, uh, better if you just get more control so the question is do we need to get up there or down here getting down here is um, a lot easier and if I see this correctly, this is just optional. You just find like a collectible object here. Nice leather for shoes, but we need no shoes. <laughs> a bit of leather, and he says, just says, yes, yeah, some leather for shoes. We don't need shoes, so it's use it. I would have wished that the collectibles would be more interesting. 
Nice leather for shoes, but we needs no shoes. How do we get back, though? I guess how we got here. No, you could also jump down there again, I assume. Not sure if that's better or climbing back. It's at least possible to climb back. So it is the other way. We have to go up. Now we have to, of course, hit this here. And you always hold your breath doing these jumps here. You can turn around, that's good. And get the, all the swinging power that we can get here. Well, almost died there. I'll take it. Also, we are slowly running out of stamina for holding it. I have to jump. I was a little bit left. Jump didn't come out. We keep the collectible though. In a way, the easiest way getting back here would have been just jumping down. See, we still have the leather. We've just jumped down. Intentional death to to speed uh, to speed this up, but yeah, whatever. Now we have all the swinging power in the world. And jump. And we almost missed it, but we got magically pulled up. So we could hold on to it. Great. Okay, here's where we get up. And yeah, now we're finally there. Cutscene again. Potentially showing us where to go next. Again. <laughs> Like I said, this is so weird. Oh, there's a lever. You have to pull that. Oh, awesome. And then they want us to go over here. So there's still a bit of climbing left, but it's not that much. Like I said, it's just... You play this game and sometimes it feels like it's... What year do we have? 2003 has called once it's game design back or so. It's it's really weird. I wouldn't even say 2003. I think in 2003 platformers did this better already. already. And here, just let go. Get all the way down. Pull the lever. It's pretty easy. Question now is... Another bird. Precious makes the wood thing move like a skull on a string. Nice. Okay, it wants us to get on this thing that has the um, platform moved. Question is, how do we get there from here? Do we do? Does the game want us to get back again, or do we go there from here? Oh, that's a way actually down there on the platform. And now, yeah, I guess we have to jump from this platform to this platform to get where we want to be. I would say this next section is at least on paper kind of fun. At least it's platform-wise more interesting with this holding on. But also a lot of waiting for cycles, that's not that great. I think that was like a different way, but we just kind of tried it this way. Yeah, I thought he would not cling on to it and fall, fall, uh, fall down again, but it worked. This here I didn't check for a moment. 
and you instantly die. Like, cool. Getting pulled up there, instant death. I try to j jump on this thing again. Of course it doesn't work because you can't cling onto it. Great. Yeah, just try to jump up and... But whatever, let's... Hold on to this and this time hopefully we'll make it. But as I said, I still don't know what to do at the very end. So we might see this again because I don't know what's going on. Stamina running low. Close one. Almost fell down there. I have to admit, this section here was really annoying. Mainly because I already basically was there where I need to be, but I didn't understand what I need to do. A little extra round here and hold on to it. So what do we do have to do here? I think going to the left. What on earth? Nope, that was also not it. So I thought maybe we have to go to this thing, which makes complete sense in my opinion. Just don't go into the spikes, just go to the to the left and get on this wooden beam there, but nope, that was not the answer. And we have to do this again and wait for the cycles. As you can see, it's not a great platforming section, I have to admit. I mean, if I fall down, it's also insta-death, but good that they made some insta-death spikes there as well, just for good measure. Just to make it the extra little bit frustrating. And here, if you look close, you notice that there's a little prompt again. Okay, you can't stand on this, but I think it's not intended. A prompt that you can do a back jump. <laughs> of course. You can oh, this game. Yeah. Mm. Of course we did not hold on to this, so yeah, we just have to get up. It's that's simple. Can't get up, so I assume. I have to hold on to this um, climbable wall there. Yeah, and this is why blind jumps are often not that fun. I jumped a little bit too late, and. Sure, that was kind of on me. I could have just done it better, but just just getting a perspective where I see this a lot better, like this here, to manually adjust this, and yeah, I don't know, it's just not great. And another round. On the other side, there's another climb of the wall, I think that's where we have to jump onto. Nice, on paper, it's one of the better climbing sections, but some stuff here is also not that great, I have to admit. Oh, sometimes nobody is uh, praising you for what you're doing. You need to praise yourself a little bit. <laughs> this is funny, though. You climb up and I can't... Did you see the camera just spinning? So in case you are motion, have motion sickness, this is a terrible section, I think. I don't have that, but like we we climbed, I, I just climbed down again and climbed up just just because I can't believe the camera the camera just does this weird go from below and does this weird spinning around. You have, they've never seen something like this in a video game. Maybe it has to do be, with that this um, wall is kind of at a really weird angle. That is too steep and the camera simply has no idea what to do um, while climbing this weird angle. I think that is what what's causing the problem. But it's just bad. 
And it's really bad. And yeah, unfortunately, there's not much law stuff I can tell you here. I can just complain a little bit about some weird design decisions. Good that he says this, because it doesn't look like you can make this jump. It's kind of far, but Gollum is just... If you look at it, really good at jumping far in this game. He can jump like three meters high. Like, he can do this jump already. It looks like almost impossible, and he can do it. He can jump like, I don't know, ten meters far. It's very strange. Yeah, the game wants us to do the back jump again. Also got a prompt for it. Slave's not happy. Almost there. Now where do they keep mapses? Oh no. I was close. Almost got caught there. Stop looking out the window. Didn't hit the right button there. Some bread, nice. Here's where they store the bread, it seems. And you can also hide an object, so it's very basic stealth mechanic. You control stones, there are these shadows where you can hide in that are very predefined and sometimes make no sense. I said stone throwing for distracting enemies, you can turn off lights at very specific lights, I should say. And that's basically it when it comes to all the stealth mechanics. There are like no smoke bombs or... I mean, it would be strange for Gollum to have those, to be fair, but... I feel like for a good stealth game, you need stuff like this these days. Some cool abilities, like... If you think about um, games that also have, to some degree, a little bit of stealth, Dishonored or so, you can teleport in this game and so on. And some really cool combat move abilities and and so on and so forth. So it's very basic. We got seen, but whatever, we don't care. It doesn't matter. As long as we don't alarm these two guys here. We have two orcs here, one there to exit and one is patrolling the room. Of course. And here, I can't move when I want to throw a stone. So I can't aim and move the stone at the same time. This makes this insanely, yeah, I don't know, clunky. It doesn't feel great. Just, just let me slowly move. I just want to throw my stone to this, and it's simply not possible for what, for no apparent reason. There's always something blocking the, the, the throwing pass, it seems. He can see us, of course, because I have to, like, fiddle around two hours with the aiming controls. It's just not great. And he sees us through this wall. And that's, that's why stealthing is not fun. I luckily see where I need to go here. And at least I think that is where we need to go. Maybe I don't need to go here, I'm not sure. But yeah, it that's, that's just, just runs through all the stuff. It's often much better than trying to actually stealth through it, unfortunately. Just min minor details like these that kind of are not that great. So the indicator shows us we have to go up. I assume I, I was right um, 
getting to this ledge there. I just need to be careful that I don't get caught here because I don't want to do this again. Should I this? No, no reason to report this. He agrees. Nice guy. See how high Gollum can jump <laughs> from this position, it's just ridiculous. Careful, we don't fall down here. It's potentially very easy to see where we need to go. Currently a bit stuck, simply. Oh, there's the ledge. I don't know how I didn't see this. Probably blind, but um, yeah found it and here we are we can go up okay there's at least one seems like no patrol could be wrong though okay now I have to find some plants steal the plants from the architect's building Make the joke that the architect from Matrix is living in Mordor, but yeah. No. That is an interesting thing I haven't seen yet. But you see, the light is removing this this misty shadow where we would be invisible in. Very interesting to see here. And we have now to find the right map. That's okay, I think. Here it is. Cutscene. This one. This one looks like the tower. Nasty tower of light. Yeah. Time to go back. Orcs will miss us. Don't want to go up the silent stairs, do we? Question is, how do we get out here? I'm not climbing all this down again. He still doesn't see us though, even though also glitches with the shadow. Come. Time to leave. Oh, okay, we can just get out here. It's much easier than I thought. So we have to distract him. But, oh, there's just a window. We can get out there. Nobody. And we just get to the trigger point and move on. Like I said, selfing this game is often doesn't really feel it's worth it a lot. And this was, I assume, the Hall of Grunt. Not sure if we have to return here, I don't think so. Get to see it one more time. Very nice. Of course, a very slow cart. Uh, drive here that we have. Here would have been the, a good opportunity to make, like, for the, for the developers, make a cut and just spawn us on the other side so we don't have to wait here for, like, literally five minutes to get from A to B again. Oh, we got caught. This won't try to skip work. Yeah. Crane was tampered with too. Snarra's looking into it. Cut him open. No, 
wasn't us. Look at us. We're famished. Down to the lakes with him. See how he likes deserting them. <laughs> Lakes? Yes, our fiery lakes. Fiery lakes. A bunch of slaves didn't report back yesterday. I want all missing numbers by the time they sound the horn. No, please, no lakes, no fire. Look how big his eyes got. Fiery lakes, and we are back to finding weird tags again. Like we did this already in the last episode. <laughs> Good that. This task is back. I guess one of my favorite tasks to just walk through a level and find three tags. That's one. You see the, the, the scene, there was also not much tension in the scene. But this is more budget problem, I think, than whatever. It would be at least great if this section would be more interesting. The little thing that at the edges of the screen, so we know it's really hot. The lava looks kind of cool, though, I have to admit. <laughs> Climbs the ladder, finds the slave tags. Awesome. Captain, what? One of your men crawled up that tunnel over there. And shouldn't he be worth it? Extreme heat slows Gollum down. Nice. How are we all so slow on top of everything else? Sneak wants to sleep just a little further, sweet one. Just a little. Okay, cutscene. Okay. Ah, here we have Sauron appearing as the red fiery eye. Here they're referencing, like, Gollum, of course, as we know, gets must leave Mordor at some point, and Sauron allows him to go. I assume this is what they were faring here. And someone lets him go because he he felt there was some darkness in his heart that he could use against Sauron's enemies. And maybe he would get the ring and then Sauron only need to get Smeagol. Slash Gollum. And that uh, he saw as a useful tool. That's why he let him go. I assume that is what they're referencing here. Here we learn that no this man is like a king, Can't potentially from the Easterlings or this from some south, uh, from the Haradrim or something like that. You remember the red Every time he this. talks, his, his beard moves up a little bit. It's just up to that bridge. very strange. Fight or keep eating dirt. It's your choice. But we are going. Creaking bridge. Just listen. Just climb up. Up. As high as you can. <laughs> there it was again. There's a storage room with many barrels. One of them should have a black mark. Up to the creaking bridge. He's nothing but skin and bones. He can't do it. He can. You can do this. You know the drill. Take a stone, put it in the barrel, run. Get up. Let's show those vermin who I am. Take the red stones. Who's up there? Yeah, so he is like, they call him King on Son. Go so he on. seems to be kind of Go important. Now we have to do the barrel. Bridge. Thing again now for him. He will light his. Kaiba, who is go? There is no time. And another climbing section. That sounds awesome, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, so I guess it's slow crawling through a tunnel, and now comes a lot of climbing. Again. Like what? What would have the Freeman done without us? It seems like we're absolute pro climbers in Mordor, and that's a climber in Mordor. And without us, nothing would ever work. Oh, 
It's high. Now what? Mm. What are we doing? And here, at least it's optional. I think you can just skip it. I'm not sure if it's true though. But it shows again where I need to go. Oh god, almost fell down there. Like I said, when you do wall jump and jump, he always do, does a max distance jump. You can't control the jump while it's in any shape or form. You can easily fall off a platform when you do this. Not that great. Okay. More jumping. Another ledge. And of course, I did, he doesn't, doesn't grab it and I fall to my death. Awesome. And yeah, here the checkpoint isn't set as generous. At least the jump here works and it clings to it. Or it feels like you jump off into the abyss. And drink from nasty fire lakes. Um, we could tell the oxes, get nice reward for frail man's head. But the ox want us dead. Hey. Nice blind jump here. We have done them nothing. I mean, you could have turned the camera a bit, but the camera also locks sometimes a little bit in, in case you wonder. In theory, the camera should. Maybe turn a little bit automatically. Very weird. Okay, it seems we just climb up there. Okay, I can't jump here for whatever reason. I assume because we see the angle of the platform here. The question is, do we need to be lower or higher? Okay, that works. We have enough food. I think it's the extra food. We can read that um, Gollum tried to find nests and eggs and also the young of some other animals in some holes. Even cradled, so... Kind of makes sense that Gollum would eat eggs of some birds. <laughs> oh god, I almost fell down here. Yeah. <laughs> it was close. I mean, the clunkiness adds a little bit of tension to it because every jump can be your last. Here, I just hit my head against the wall above and couldn't cling onto it and fell to my death. And luckily, there's a save point here. This time it just worked without this happening, but I don't know. It's un the problem is it's unintentional tension that happens here. <laughs> He turns around exactly in the moment. <laughs> what is that? Hope that distracted him enough. Oh, he saw us, but whatever, I don't care. We all can't climb here. Okay, through the window. Weird indoor climbing section. I have to 
adjust the camera manually. Of course, we almost fell down there. And we're finally there. Here we put in the redstone as with the other explosive barrels. It looks like this tunnel is where I need to go. But it's not the tunnel. I can already spoil that. Black mark. Now in goes the redstone. Redstone? Oh, Minecraft here. Yeah. But yeah, it's... And yeah, the good old slow-mo jump into this thing here. the eye yeah now we blew it up why we did this is was uh, it's not clear to me but retrospectively we have two options now we can basically say it was a frail man or we could say it was somebody else this is a very interesting choice here the frail man Kind of once is that what your silence is supposed to tell me that we um Not one of basically um anything. say it was him Her so he can basically done. causing trouble leave an impression all the slave noticed that no one except for this one of course we got caught again Yes. You. But it wasn't there. It wasn't us. The great eye looks deep into your soul. That is actually correct. It is more correct than the sh than she knows. Just stop mumbling. Who led this conspiracy? Yeah, and now we can blame the cruel orc or the frail man. Just I tried out both just options. Um, when I replaced right. this, I could try the other option. First, I thought, okay, the frail man is our friend, so I blame the cruel orc who stole the bread from us. That made a lot of sense to me. But then the frail man is not happy about this because he wants to die as a hero, kind of. And now we have, like, to convince Gollum to blame the cruel orc. He will know his terrible light or the, um, Very true. frail man. The light, the needles, the pincers. We have many ways to find the truth. No, no more needles. Did you say a name? Speak louder. Smeagol is not a squealer. And yeah, you have to basically convince. It's usually relatively straightforward. I kind of even like this mechanic that you can reason with yourself. It's not a bad idea in my opinion. Especially if, as a character who has a lot of conflict in of its of himself. No, no, don't let them hurt us. You're scared. A scared little thing. Someone used you. Someone deceived you. All I want is one name. One name and you're free. The frail man, it forced us. It the, the weird thing, though, is if the frail man wants to get punished for for it, then he could just say, "Yeah, it was me." I don't, I don't get why he this doesn't one. say straight up, "Yeah, it was me. I, I blew he it up." Walks without a cane. And I ruined your minds without a cane. Now be quiet, little. So it's a bit strange that they let us make instance. the decision or the call yes. here. Well, you've said your piece. Open the cage. He goes up with the other ones. We gave her a name. She promised. Your friend wants to die in silence. So be silent. So yeah, knowing this, I would go 
I show you here the footage with with us betray uh, bet uh, with us not betraying but telling it was a frail man the king not to be touched like squealers and, and here we learned there's like a list with people that should not be eliminated we can go now come on i'm not gonna wait for you never heard of that list the rest move on gosh <laughs> long live the king long live the king and here they call him the eye I think the motive for blaming the cruel orc is stronger because he punched us and stole our bread. He was never nice to us, made fun of us, so. And I think this is a good point to um, basically end this episode now look at that hey, that freak came back from the tower let me try to make this here yeah, if he goes um i assume to his death and people um What's going on? calling him king and the orc say to shut up yeah, it's kind of interesting idea i think to get a little bit more you know spirit into the into the slaves and so on but on the other side, it won't help them anyway, so <laughs> it's for nothing but maybe for just feeling a little bit better, knowing that there can be some kind of resistance. Give it back. Look at that. Give it back. That must be where we make the Mormac. Right there under the execution chamber. But they won't even let you in there. Hmm. Give it back. Did you really destroy that bridge? We did, yes. Make it fall down on many, many little oxes. How they shrieked before they died, didn't they, precious? All day. But now we know we are on the list, so and that is not bad. Sleep. And now we are back in our cell and this leads us to the end of this episode. We will continue in a later episode, in episode 3, obviously, and then see how stuff is continuing in Mordor, in Barad-dur, and how we escape. That is, I assume, our next big goal to just get out of here. Though, as said in the books, Sauron simply lets us go. It's that easy, but in this game it's portrayed a little bit differently. So I would say... Thank you people for watching and see you next time. If you liked this episode, as always, maybe press the like button. Leave a comment, tell me how you liked it. I try to not talk over um, dialogue and cutscenes too much this time because that I felt like it was maybe a bit much last time. But sometimes the game is very talkative and I also want to place my comment until the situation is over and we have to talk about something that happened five minutes ago. So there's that. It, I have to admit, it took a bit of time to produce this episode simply because, like I said, the game really is not great and um, it was a bit difficult to motivate myself simply to get this done here. Though I think it's still an interesting project at times and it's, as I said, some, some of the discussion we might have is quite interesting. But um, yeah, not every aspect of the game is unfortunately that interesting as we have seen in this very climbing heavy episode. So not much is what's happening here story-wise and we have to see what's going on next time. I also do some stuff currently a lot or decently on the games channel so if you are into video games this year is a very strong year for video games then maybe check that out. I will produce some more um, other stuff. Recently we looked into the cyberpunk expansion and what we know about it and what will come for that. And some other details we checked the uh, Jedi Survivor patch 6 
that's kind of worth it and fix the game. Uh, details like this. I also at times play on Twitch, so maybe look there as well. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet here, feel free to press the subscribe button if you like this. It would be much appreciated. I would say shout outs to all my supporters and thank you people for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.